what brought you into this business? It's the people, it's the connections, it's it's seeing that glowing moment of, oh my gosh, I just found my dream house or my very first house. That's a beautiful moment where you get to dream with them almost. Welcome everyone to the Closing Table Podcast brought to you by Windowsill. I'm your host, Cat Schooler. Thank you all for being here with us today. I've got a great guest. I can't wait to share our conversation with you. Today I'm talking with Willow Johnston. Willow, how you doing? Good. How are you? Good. And Willow is a real estate agent with Full Circle Real Estate. Uh, and you're based out of the Holly, Michigan area. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we're a little boutique brokerage out in Holly. I love Holly. I got married in Holly. It is the cutest town. Did you get married at the vault? Yes, I did. That's where my dad got married. It is so beautiful. That's so awesome. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And we had our rehearsal dinner at the hotel. Like hopefully they'll finish restoring that soon. Um, Holly is just such, what do they say? Like a Norman Rockwell meets like a Hallmark movie. <laughs> it really is. It's, it's so perfect. beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So Willow, let's jump right in. Springtime is prime time for buyers, um, buyers and sellers. And so how can people be prepared? Honestly, I would say jump in as soon as possible. Like the market is already so hot. We had a couple of girls put in offers on one specific property and they got an email back. There was 21 offers and that was just oh, this wow. past month. So the spring market is already like in full force. <laughs> There's a lot of competition out there. I would just be ready to be competitive, be realistic, um, you know, about what your wants and needs are. And then go for it. <laughs> Jump right in. Yeah. I saw some of your posts. You were talking about the spring market like back as early as December. Is it ever too early to start preparing? No, I would say the earlier the better. Because once like we get past the holiday season, people are more focused on buying and selling again. And once that hits, you don't want to be in with the rest of the competition. You want to try and hit as early as you possibly can to avoid all of that. Awesome. And how can people prep? Like, what can they do? The biggest thing I would say is get with a lender that you trust. Like a pre-approval is a huge thing. Once you've got that, you're good to go. Like start house hunting right after that. Um, then you can kind of get your eyes more open to what's actually in my price range, what's realistic for me, and go from there. So definitely pre-approval first. Awesome. Thank you. That's super helpful. And so when they are finally, like, they've bought the house, they're ready to move in, you mention a lot on, on your social media, like, the kinds of things pr people forget to do when they move. So can you talk about that a little? Like, what? how do you guide your clients when they're finally moving? Move your bills over. Make sure that you get everything, like, up and running. Call consumers. Get your gas bill in your name. Um, those are just simple things that I think are easily lost in the hustle and bustle of moving. Yeah, for sure. And because you're, like, you feel like maybe the journey's over by that point. You know, you went through this whole, like, home buying and selling process probably. And, and those things, you know, could easily fall through the cracks. Um. What is some outdated home selling advice that you're seeing out there right now? I would say like it's pretty easy for most people to understand that like we have to have staging. We have to have um, professional photography because that's really what sells your home. We see the homes initially on the internet and then we're like, okay, we're going to go check that out. Um, but I think one of the biggest things is just being real, like realistic um, when setting a price for your home, really being able to trust your agent and looking at those, um, you know, comparable properties on the market because you can't really just place your home on the market for whatever and expect people to negotiate for you. Right now, it's really like it needs to be at market value or even a little bit below to bring in those buyers and not have them too intimidated by the price point. Um, that's where you get the bidding wars and actually selling above what you listed for. That's awesome. And then do you, like, what would you say about, like, the myth that people think if they list their house themselves, they'll make more money or they'll save more money? 
honestly, most situations where sellers get sued are because it's for sale by owner. Um, oh so my. I would say definitely reach out to an agent. There's a lot of paperwork that goes into it and you want somebody that's going to be negotiating on your behalf. Um, a lot of real estate classes are just behind the do's and don'ts of what to do not to get yourself sued. Um, you get out of it and you learn a lot about writing contracts and what does the showing look like? What does a listing presentation look like? So um, to have that knowledge behind it, just get somebody that you trust <laughs> to guide you through the process. Certainly. Oh, man. <laughs> Nobody wants to get sued. That would be awful. It's a whole headache, and people are very so happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they are, especially with a big transaction like this. So um, can you talk a little bit about, like, how you work with clients? You know, kind of what makes you stand out, the kinds of things you do for your clients? So I actually have a, um, a history of retail behind this. So I was in mm -hmm. retail management for five years before I was ever in real estate. And that's really where I fell in love and found my passion with connecting for other people or connecting with other people. So that's um, the biggest thing that I would say I bring to the table that can be a little bit different. I'm very personable. Um, I want to make that relationship and continue to build it. So I listen a lot to what is the main motivation for them buying, selling, investing, and really build from there, um, but get to know them as a person and let them know that I'm interested in doing what's best for them overall, and that I'm always looking out for their needs before anything else. Um, I think that I build trust with people, and that's one of the biggest things. That is that is so important, especially like we you know we keep saying this. It's such a big transaction. And I think, you know, as an agent, you do it all the time. Most people, unless maybe you're an investor, you're not buying and selling property every day. So, and especially as things change, like, you, I don't know, you know, lay people, civilians, whatever we want to call ourselves, aren't necessarily keeping up with it. Um, so you spoke a little bit, of, you know, about your history. What made you want to go into real estate? Um, so my dad had been begging me to get into real estate for the longest time, but I was actually very afraid um, just because it is solely commission based unless you do have those investments that bring you passive income. Um, but I actually met um, Bailey Jensen. She was one of my part time managers at the Okemos Marisa's when I was the store manager there. Um, and she one day brought to me, she was like, Hey, you're friends with my sister on Facebook. And I was like, who's your sister? And she was like, Corbin Gearhart. <laughs> and I was like, what? So Corbin had reached out to me previously as well and asked me to get involved in real estate. She was like, I think that you would be great as an agent, but I didn't take her seriously because I didn't know her. And I think it was just my mindset at the time too. I had a lot to go through a lot of growing to do, um, before I got to this point in my life. But I started watching her social media more closely from there on. I uh, definitely messaged her quite a bit after that to ask her more questions about what it is to be an agent and what like day to day looks like. Um, and then from there, Keller Williams and Kaplan partnered together to offer free real estate education back in 2020, 2021, around there. Mm. So I decided to take my take my classes and um, I passed my course. I went on to take my tests and then. Finally, there was one day that I was like, okay, I'm just fed up with doing this. Like, I need to move on and start my real estate career. So I up and quit, which is not like me either, and jumped headfirst into real estate. And that's just where I've been since. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm so glad it's going so well for you. So you're you're still, you know, fairly new along in your journey. But, you know, do you have any kind of most memorable moments so far? Uh, most memorable moments. There's a lot of memorable transactions, I would say, like where crazy things happen. Real estate is a roller coaster and you really don't understand until you get into it. And there's always something that comes up during the transaction. But boy, I've had some crazy transactions and just to like try and take that on my shoulders and not let the client feel the stress. <laughs> It's like one of the biggest things I would say um, that you don't realize goes behind the scene because, I mean, I purchased my first home before I was ever in real estate, before I had ever taken my classes for real estate, and I just didn't realize how much truly went on behind the scenes.
that they do to make it feel so seamless. So I would say that <laughs> is probably my oh. biggest thing. <laughs> Yeah. So, so like, what are, like, do you have a favorite story? Give us a, for instance. Uh, so one of my, for instance, um, uh, we pulled up to a home because we were supposed to get the keys that day. Um, the seller had occupancy for five days after, and this one was definitely a little crazy. Um, we go to open the lockbox and it wouldn't open. Um, the neighbor actually came over and she was like, oh my gosh, you're the agent. I knew you were coming. And I was like, what? Um, yeah, I am. So she let us in the back door and she was like, oh, they always keep this open. The sellers had just moved out of state. Um, so I like texted the other agent and I was like, hey, you can come get your lockbox. We have, um, access to the home now. Like everything's good. And we got the police called on us. <laughs> they were like, um, you guys are breaking and entering. <laughs> But we showed the police, um, the police, the addendum, that it was now their property, technically, um, and they had no issues. Like, we didn't, we didn't get in any trouble <laughs> that day, but we had the police call on us, I believe, three times. So I felt really oh bad my. for my sellers, <laughs> or not my sellers, my buyers, because it was a crazy, uh, crazy situation, and the sellers had already moved out of state, so it was a little confusing, but we got through it. <laughs> Wow, how bizarre. Yeah, that would be a memorable sale. Definitely stressful. <laughs> yeah, I think that's definitely one of those stories you look back on like years later and you can laugh about it, but maybe not in the moment. Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, I'm glad it all worked out okay for those <laughs> for those buyers. One of the other things you mentioned on your social media was um, – Taking a low interest rate home that you currently own, if you are a homeowner, right? Um, and turning that into a rental as a vehicle to buy a new home and negotiate an, an interest rate buy down. I think I phrased that correctly. But can you <laughs> can you talk about that? Because I heard that and I was like, this is 4D chess. <laughs> so this way you get to kind of hold on to that low interest rate on the property that you already own now. Um, hopefully at that point it's paid down or paid down enough to where somebody can take over those payments and move in um, as a rental. It's kind of nice because I don't think the average day person thinks that they're able to do something like that and create passive income. I think that they assume that a lot of things like that are passed down, at least I did before I was in real estate. Um, but this is just a smart way to take your initial investment, keep that low interest rate, get some passive income, and then move on to your next steps. Um, and then a buy down, you can just negotiate on basically any property. You see them a lot um, now, or you can ask for seller's concessions too to help out because, you know, a lot of people don't have a, a, a good amount of cash, you know, to put down on properties, um, especially first time home buyers, I would say, unless they've had the ability to save. Um, but that's a good way to kind of put it into the purchase price and have a win win for the seller and the buyer because the buyer gets some cash back at close to be able to cover those closing costs, or even have more money to cover moving expenses, furniture, anything that they need in the future. So is this something pretty much anyone can do or, you know, they would have to talk to their lender about the, these options? I would definitely talk to your lender because they're going to know better than anybody else. Um, there's still a lot of things that come into it. I would say like your debt to income ratio, making sure that your credit is there. Um, that if anything were to happen to like, imagine you get somebody into your new rental home and then they decide they're not going to pay rent. <laughs> then you have to go through the eviction process. You're having someone live in your house rent free. So that's a lot of money um, kind of on your back after that. Like if you move into a new home, you're already kind of in that headache of like, oh, I'm getting used to these payments and then having the stress of your old payment back on you if the home wasn't completely paid off. So those are all things to think about too. That's a very good thing to think about. Are you seeing a lot of people do this with when they have a low interest rate home, but maybe are looking for something bigger or something else in in a home? Um, not entirely. I just think it's a good option for people to consider, especially if they are um, good with their money and they've put a lot of money back into the home and are almost, you know, 
out free from the bank and <laughs> they own their home outright because then you can take that rent and, you know, keep it as like a little cushion for yourself, a, a little extra income or just um, for repairs that, you know, come down the line because, you know, owning a home is expensive. It is I would say better than renting in a way that you're not just throwing your money to the wind. You're building equity. This is an investment for yourself rather than an investment for somebody else. But it is expensive. You have the cost of a roof, uh, the furnace, a water heater potentially, and things like that. Um, property taxes can go up that a lot of people, I think, overlook sometimes. It, it is tough to own a home, but it's worth the investment. Certainly. So when you're working with first-time home buyers, is it different than working with people that have purchased before since maybe all of these things are, are a little new to them? I would say normally um, working with somebody that's purchased before, they have a little bit of equity that's been built up in, your, in their past purchases if they're um, willing to sell that home first before going on to the next. Uh, for a first-time home buyer, a lot of them are really just trying to make it work. Um, there are some people who are in great situations where they've had the ability to save and feel secure and excited to buy their first home and it goes off without a hitch. And then there's other people that you have to think more of like, what down payment assistant programs are we going to be looking into to make this possible for you? Um, and kind of doing, it's a little bit harder when the market is so competitive too, because you're going to have to figure out what price point is realistic, not necessarily what pr like price point you're approved to so that we're able to be competitive, but you're not breaking the bank so that you're not gonna move into this house and be so stressed because that was the top of your budget. Right, right. So just to kind of get even more detailed, you said the the price that's realistic, not just the price that you're approved to. Are you suggesting like people should be wary of buying too much house? Yes, 100%. Um, I would say that, and I think a lender most of the time guides you in that direction as well. Because um, once you're looking at a home, you can send that address to the lender, and they're able to pull, okay, what are the taxes going to look like, and get more specific for your price point. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people try to keep up with the Joneses or they look at, okay, this is my first time house, but I want all the bells and whistles. And sometimes it's just not realistic. And I think that's something too that as a society is hard with social media, making everything look so glorious. And we want that for ourselves too. But taking the first step, I think is more important than anything else. Even if you're buying a fixer upper, you're starting somewhere and you have the ability to build now where if you don't start anywhere, you're waiting for that perfect house to, to come up, you're not taking that first step. And I think it almost prolongs the process for you where you're probably mm -hmm. going to have to settle in time anyway. Um, so might as well get into it and just do what you need to do to, you know, buy a house, even if it's not perfect. Something realistic, though, something that you don't have to sink a ridiculous amount of money in, but just not with all the bells and whistles. Totally. Yeah. Everybody wants like the Instagrammable house, but it's a different thing, maybe paying for it. Um, also, like, come on, let's be real. Like, I've seen these these influencers or even whatever, you know, micro influencers and like the rest of the house, their house is a mess. It's like one corner of one room. <laughs> and I think anybody can have a nice corner in a room. Um, are you noticing, are you noticing amongst your clients, because I've been talking to a lot of people lately about these clients who are not in a hurry. And, you know, I've been talking to a lot of people lately. They're like, oh yeah, this client, they took a year and a half to buy a house. They took three years. And that's really funny to me because I don't know. That just doesn't appeal to me. Do you, are you finding a lot of your clients are taking a long time, maybe because it is competitive or maybe they're looking for something really specific? Or do you feel like you have a good mix of like long searches and short searches? I would 
say it's a good mix. Um, some people, I show them a house for the first time and they're like, I'm in love. This is the one. Or we have a tour set for that day and one specifically, they're like, okay, this is it. And I love that. You can see the moment where somebody glows and they're like, this is the place. Like they start dreaming of their future there. And that's what I want for every single one of my clients. So honestly, I don't mind if it takes a little bit longer. Um, I know it can be tough. Like I've heard some real estate agents where they're like, I made no money off that sale because I spent so much time and gas money and whatever else. But to me, at the end of the day, um, real estate, and you probably hear this from a lot of real estate agents, it's real estate is not something where you get into it for the money. Real estate is a referral business. It's about making connections. And I think that a lot of people are real estate because you've seen our numbers too. It's like 75% drop out in the first year um, because they're busy, you know, focusing on chasing paper when it's really like, go back to the meaning and the why of originally what brought you into this business. It's the people, it's the connections, it's it's seeing that glowing moment of, oh my gosh, I just found my dream house or my very first house. That's a beautiful moment where you, you get to dream with them almost of where are you going to put your furniture and what are you going to do with this room? Like, I love that. <laughs> It makes sense. I think so many people connect with it. It's why we have shows like House Hunters, right? Why do we all sit at home and watch other people buy houses? Because we're you want to be in on the dream and and you and other agents have just chosen to like live that dream with people every day. It's so nice and it's really different every day too. Uh, I think that's what keeps me so interested. I'm always learning something new. So it keeps me curious. Speaking of, of lessons learned, if you were to start over in your business today, is there anything you would be doing differently? That is so tough because I feel like I'm learning a new lesson every day, honestly. Um, oof. Yeah, that is, that is very tough. Um, honestly, I would say what I was saying before about just don't get into, you know, real estate for money. Like really focus on your relationships um, relationship building. I would say one thing too is making sure that you have a great team behind you because real estate is a lot of moving parts. It's not just the agent. You got to have a great lender. You have to have a great title company. There's just so much behind it, making great relationships with, you know, moving companies, cleaning companies, um, so on and so, so forth, really. But just making sure that you have connections with people who generally care too. Um, about the clients because at the end of the day, this is not just another transaction. You're dealing with somebody's biggest purchase of their life. So you really have to be invested in that client and do what's best for them and not leave it on the back burner. And for me, I'm always looking for the best person to be working with in that aspect and somebody who's on their game because if I'm not, then I'm not on my game. But it's like every tiny moving part needs to be right in line so that I can do the best for my clients. That's such a great way of looking at it. So when it comes to finding all of those people, did do you feel like your your brokerage helped you with that or your mentors helped you with that? Or do you did some of that you find on your own? Um, I would say both. Um, like my broker, she's amazing. She really comes from the same place as I do, I would say, is just leading from her heart. Um, and that's what makes her different than I think a lot of leaders is that she's not like this shark in the world. She truly cares about every single person that she works with, including the people who work for her. So at the end of the day, she's there to be a resource for us. And we can text her and call her any time of the day. And she's like, Phew, that with response. She's absolutely amazing. Um, so she definitely helps guide us a lot, I would say, but I personally like to make my own connections too. Um, I'm a part of our networking and community involvement at the brokerage because I love to meet new people. Um, aside from just like clientele, I would say I love to make connections with people in the industry. Um, so I, I would say that a lot of the connections that I've made and the people that I work with now are people that I went and ventured off and found that connect with me really well. And I like their communication styles. I think they go above and beyond for their clients. Um, yeah. That's awesome. And did it take some sorting out or were you just able to kind of like lock in these people? Like, did you maybe have to go through a couple, you know, kind of like, not quite up to snuff people to get to your A-list team? A hundred percent. 
Like, I don't love to talk bad about anybody, I would say, because we all have, you know, these learning moments, these learning curves, Mm -hmm. and you never know, like, what somebody is going through in their life, but when I was on the apps originally, I was on OpCity, um, and they work through Realtor.com, I met this client, and I love him, we still talk to this day, (laughs) he lives just a couple minutes down the road, really, and, um, I actually went and helped deep clean his house the first day he moved in. We are just that oh, wow. close. And um, I I met him through the apps, and his loan officer, he was already connected with somebody, reached out to me and warned me. He was like, he already went through two other agents before you. So because you're new, he was like one of my first transactions. I think he was my first transaction. Um, because you're new, I might just, I'm warning you. This might not be for you. This is going to be complicated. And I was like, listen, I have the communication skills and I'm I'm willing to take a risk. You know, if he doesn't like me, he can fire me. That's okay. But I'm going to give my all for him. And it worked out. But the, <laughs> the transaction was tough. It was actually the loan officer that I ended up being very unhappy with because we kept um, extending and extending. And then I was calling and talking to the listing agent and the loan officer was presenting it like it was a thing on my client's end. When he was a first time home buyer, he didn't understand what a lot of, you know, what he was going through even was. Um, so to have that put on him when it really wasn't in his hands at that moment, it was other moving parts that weren't moving correctly, that really bothered me. So I'll Mm. always work for my clients and that's who I'm here for above all else. I cannot, I won't work alongside people that are not on the same page as that. Right. Oh gosh. I do love those stories though. When you hear of that, there's a client that has not been able to be helped by other people. Right. And I do think, especially when you get the heads up, you're like, you see it as a challenge. You're like, oh, this is a hill I can climb. Um, And those are some of my favorite stories I hear from agents. Me too. I'm like, I'm not a people pleaser necessarily, but I want to prove myself. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. And it's, it's like, um, I don't know. It's like being friends with the grumpy person at the office. Like if you're in with them, like you must be really cool, you know? (laughs) Heck yeah. Do you have any? Everybody. (laughs) Yeah. 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 You're like, I'm so great that even grumpy people love me, which I'm sure they do, Will. You are so sweet. Um, oh, do you, you have any other, like, favorite client stories? Um, well, one of my clients, too, he purchased with me back in October, and we actually recently just sold his house. Um, so he had this horrible moment at work, and this is another thing that I think goes back to, this is a referral-based business. Like, keep connected with your clients. These Lasting connections that you build are what continues to project you in the future. The fact that he felt comfortable reaching back out to me when he was somebody that met me through the apps, you know, he could have reached out to a friend or a family member and been like, hey, do you know a good agent to sell my home? But he thought of me because he loved me through my first transaction with him. So I got to help him with this and he was actually going through this horrible time at work and I was like, you know what, this is for the better you get to move and you're going to be closer to family. Um, And then everything ended up falling in line. He actually got a job opportunity out there for the same type of position, but double the pay. Everything is just, it's falling in line. He gets to be with his family again. He, he was not happy here. He was depressed. So going to a new warmer state, that's beautiful. (laughs) So he moved out of state. He did. He moved out of state. Oh. We haven't closed so quite you... yet. <laughs> it's next week, but we're on we're on point and we're just sending a notary out to him. So he's already moved. Oh wow. <laughs> so are you licensed in multiple states then? No, I'm not. So I just sold his oh, okay. home here and he's actually going oh, to move with right, his right, sister. Right. I'm I'm caught up. I'm sorry. I was like, because I know a lot of Michigan realtors are also licensed in like Florida and things like that. So you helped him sell his home. I'm I'm up to date now. <laughs> um, well, so this is kind of a funny transition. Um, you know, obviously it wasn't for him, but what do you love about about your area, about homes in your area? We talked about Holly a little bit um, or why I love Holly, but I'd love to hear why you love Holly or the surrounding area. So I actually don't live out in Holly. I live out in Lansing. Okay. 
but I don't do most of my selling in Lansing. I've done selling all around Michigan, um, and I just kind of view that as my area because I'm like, that's the area I'm legally allowed to sell in, <laughs> and um, I'm not in love with the city. Uh, to be honest, I've met so many amazing people out here, and I've loved my time being here, but living here is not necessarily my thing. I grew up in Livingston County, and that used to be, like, farmland when I was little, and now it's suburbia, um, and I don't think suburbia is for me either, so me being able to show properties and make connections all over Michigan is kind of guiding me to my future destination too because I'm looking for my forever home. I'm looking for a unicorn. <laughs> so that's my journey right now and um, I just like the opportunities that it opens up for me too. It gives me more potential to connect with more people. That's so cool. Yeah, because it's like, well, while you're helping clients find home, you're also kind of building up your dream too so what would be your dream home is it like is it acreage is it like a is it like farmland um it's not entirely farmland but it's definitely acreage I want a good chunk of land um the only thing that I feel like makes it tough and makes it more of a unicorn home is I want a good chunk of land with a nice updated home and only like 10-15 minutes away from a grocery store sale <laughs> so that's why that I'm is, that is the... <laughs> Like, struggle bus. <laughs> well, the way Michigan is going, I'm sure it'll be there soon. Because, yeah, I know what you're saying about Livingston County. Like, I'm over in Oakland County. It is filling up quickly. Um, and, yeah, getting a, a good chunk of land around here is rarer and rarer. And being close to stuff. So you can either, like, <laughs> have your land and be far away from stuff or not and be close to stuff. Yeah. It's like, I need that perfect in between. I want to be able to send my kids out and be like, go play and not have, you know, myself be worried that they're going to be picked up by somebody driving down the road. <laughs> but, but I also right. want convenience and not have to drive like 20, 30 minutes to a grocery store. <laughs> well, I am sure you'll get there. Um, <laughs> speaking of things to look forward to, are there any anything you're looking forward to this year, either professionally or personally? Yes. So I'm actually pregnant currently. So I'm due to have oh, my little boy. Thank you. I'll, I'll be giving birth in September. So this is my first son. It's both me and my boyfriend's first child in general. So we're very like nervous, but excited. Um, we've been dreaming of taking this leap for a long time. And honestly, real estate really inspired that because with Myself working retail before, we're very, both of, both him and I are on the same page of we don't want other people raising and watching our kids. We want to be the people doing that mm. um, and being inspired by the women in my office, bringing in their kids and using them as their little assistants. Like <laughs> they're just coming along for the ride and they get to enjoy the life of motherhood and be this career driven woman. Um, it's beautiful to see. And I was like, I can do that. They can do that. I can do that. Um, and now he doesn't have to stay home from work <laughs> to, you know, be able to give me that career and baby life. Oh, that's so exciting. I'm so excited for you both. Congratulations. Thank you so much. We can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, Willow, thank you so much for, for spending your time with me today. Would you like to direct everyone on how they can follow you, how they can find you and work with you? Yes. So my Facebook is Willow Johnston. I also have a professional page that's Willow Johnston Realtor, but go ahead and add me on my personal one. I post most there. Um, and then I have an Instagram as well that you can find me at Willow Johnston. Um, but yeah, message me anytime. I am so happy to help you in anything that you need. Um, yeah, I look forward to meeting you guys. Cool. Thank you so much, Willow. And thank you all for listening and watching. This has been the Closing Table Podcast brought to you by Windowsill. I'm Kat Schooler. If you are enjoying this podcast, please consider leaving us a rate and review. Give us that like and subscribe. It helps us find more amazing listeners like you. Thank you guys so much, and we will see you next time.